Hello and welcome to a new video guide from Grandstream Networks. In this video, we're going to be looking at the high availability feature built into the Grandstream UCM 6300 series. This feature was added in firmware version 1.0.9.x. In an HA setup, there are two UCM devices where one UCM is in active mode and the other UCM is in standby mode. The UCM in active mode will sync its configuration and data with the standby UCM in a real-time manner. Using the heartbeat connection, the standby UCM will regularly monitor the UCM in active mode for any hardware or software issues to immediately take over and become the active UCM. The HA feature offers automatic call recovery that keeps the ongoing and new calls alive without service interruption. Before enabling high availability feature on the UCM, it is important to know the basic software and hardware requirements as well as the configuration parameters needed for that setup. First, the two UCM devices used in that setup must be of the same model and use the same firmware version to ensure proper configuration and data synchronization. The two UCM devices must be in the same physical location and directly connected to each other using the heartbeat port on each UCM. For this connection, straight through Ethernet cable is required. Next, connect both UCMs to the local network using either the LAN or WAN port. Just make sure the used ports are identical. For the analog trunks using the FXO ports on the UCM, an analog telephone adapter is required to split the PSTN signal between each UCM's FXO port. The same thing applies to FXS ports when using analog devices. Because HA feature does not support dual mode, the network mode on both UCMs must be set to either switch or router mode. Both devices must be assigned static IP addresses. You will need to log into the web interface of the UCM and manually configure the static IP address and the network settings. After you ensure all the configuration prerequisites are met, then you can enable and configure high availability on both UCMs. Under the HA configuration page, you will be asked to assign a virtual static IP address for the HA cluster. This IP address will be shared by the primary and secondary UCM, but it will only be used by the UCM in active mode, regardless of whether it is primary or secondary UCM. SIP endpoint devices must use the virtual IP address to register and connect to the UCM. During the HA configuration, you will also need to choose which UCM will be the primary UCM and which one will be the secondary UCM. For example, if you have a UCM that is already configured up and running and you decide to add another UCM for high availability, you can set the existing UCM to a primary and add the new UCM as secondary. This way, once the HA configuration is completed successfully, the primary UCM will synchronize its existing configuration and data with the secondary UCM automatically. As I mentioned earlier, the standby UCM will check the active UCM status periodically by sending heartbeat message to the active UCM. If the active UCM is under normal working conditions, it will respond to the standby UCM after it receives the heartbeat request from the standby UCM. By default, the heartbeat timeout period is seven seconds. If the active UCM runs into network or power issues, it will no longer respond to the heartbeat request. After the heartbeat period times out, the standby UCM will consider the active UCM to be down and it will promote itself to the active UCM. Plus, it will take ownership of the virtual IP address to get the traffic router to itself. During this process, active calls using UDP as the transport mode will only be affected for a few seconds without dropping the call. Now that we understand the prerequisites for high availability on the UCM 6300 series and how the failover process works, let's go ahead and log in to the web interface of the two UCM devices to walk you through the steps involved in the HA configuration. In this environment, I have two UCM devices that we will set up with high availability. As you can see, both devices are of the same model. So if we check the second one, 
both use CM6301. And if we look at the firmware version, it is also the same firmware version 1.0.9.10, 1.0.9.10. To enable and configure high availability feature on the UCM6300, we go under System Settings, HA. So in this example, we're going to configure this one as the primary UCM and the second one as a secondary UCM. So the first thing is we need to make sure that high availability is enabled by checking this box. Then we will select this UCM to be the primary UCM. For HA cluster IP address, this is where we enter the virtual IP address. So in this case, I'm going to use 192.168.50.6. And basically, this is the uh, virtual IP address that both UCM devices will share. And these always bind to the active UCM. For example, when configuring an IP phone to register to the UCM, this is the SIP server IP address to be configured on the IP phone. It is important to note that the cluster IP address should be in the same subnet as the static IP address configured on the UCM. In addition, uh, this IP address is the one the UCM administrator needs to use to access the uh, web interface of the active UCM. And also Wave application users uh, would also need to use the cluster IP address to connect to the UCM locally. Next, we enter the HA peer IP address. So we need to go to the next UCM and the network settings and get the local IP address. So we're going to copy this one. Then we're going to paste it right here. Uh, the HA configuration is also asking us for the MAC address of the peer UCM. So I'm going to go back here and copy the MAC address and the network settings. So let's go ahead and paste the MAC address. The heartbeat port, this is the port number used for communication between the active and standby UCM for heartbeat request and response. I will just leave it as a default. Then I will go to the heartbeat timeout period. And this value determines the frequency of heartbeat requests and how soon the standby UCM can detect the active UCM failure and uh, switch over. Uh, by default, the heartbeat timeout period is seven seconds. You can modify it to any value that you desire. I can change it, for example, to three seconds. Uh, and you can do that in case you want to reduce the time for any detection failure and switch over. The values supported for this option is three to uh, 10. Next, we have the software fault switch. So when this option is enabled, the active UCM will automatically trigger switch over if a system crash happens on the active UCM. If it is not checked, the active UCM will simply generate an alert about the issue in the event logs. The same thing applies to the hardware fault switch. So the active UCM will automatically trigger switch over if it detects an issue with the FXO port. If it is not checked, the active UCM will simply uh, generate an alert about the issue in the events logs. And one more thing to mention here is that the active UCM has a built-in mechanism to regularly check whether there is a service failure on itself. And when it detects a failure on its services or hardware, it will immediately notify the standby UCM to take over as uh, active UCM. After the switchover takes place, the original active UCM will reboot automatically and become the standby UCM. For example, when uh, hardware fault switch is checked, and if there is an issue with the FXO port, the active UCM will notify the standby UCM which can take over immediately without noticeable delay or service interruption. So let's go ahead and save these changes. It's going to ask us here to reboot. So for HA configuration, reboot is required for the settings to take effect. So I'm going to click OK. So the reboot usually takes uh, 
couple of minutes. So after a couple of minutes, the UCM is going to prompt us to log in again. So we're just going to enter the login credentials. All right. So we go back to HA settings. And if we check under HA status, it's going to show that the UCM is in active mode and the HA status is standalone. The reason why it shows standalone because we have not configured the secondary UCM. So let me go back here and configure the secondary UCM. So we're going to go under HA settings, enable. So we're going to set that one to secondary. Then we're going to go back here and copy the same information and the system information. So we need to get the MAC address and the IP address. So the MAC address, we're going to paste it right here. And the IP address of the primary UCM will paste it right here. And if you remember the IP address that we used for the HA cluster is 192.168.50.6. So we're going to enable these two options as well. Then save and apply the changes. Then it's going to prompt us again to reboot the UCM. So let's go ahead and reboot it. So while the secondary UCM is rebooting, if we go back to the primary UCM and if you go under HA status, you will see that now the status changed from standalone to dual. That means the connection has been established and here the full backup is taking place. So the primary UCM is basically syncing its uh, configuration and data with the secondary uh, UCM. So let's give it some time and connect back to the uh, standby UCM so we can uh, check the status of the secondary UCM. So now it looks like the uh, HA full backup status is back to idle. Uh, I just want to mention something about this uh, uh, setting right here. So the backup status will uh, most of the time be idle because a full backup is only performed uh, once a day at midnight to ensure that the active and standby UCM uh, always have the same configuration and data. So let's go back to the secondary UCM so we can check the status. So this is the secondary UCM. So let's go under system settings, HA. So the secondary UCM is also showing dual mode. That means the connection has been established between the two UCMs. And here we can see the role of this UCM, which is standby. So let's go ahead and make some tests to make sure that the configuration and data synchronization is actually working properly. So let's log into the primary UCM and let's go ahead and add some extensions. So I will add extension 1004, save and apply the changes. So basically every time you make change on the primary UCM, uh, the configuration and the data should sync automatically, like in real time with the secondary UCM. So let's wait for it to apply the changes. Then we go back to the secondary UCM and see if the extension 1000 and four has been synced to the secondary UCM. So if you go here, you can see that the extension 1004 has been synced with the secondary UCM. Uh, let me go back again here to um, system settings, HA, just to talk about a couple of other settings. So we talked about the HA status. So every time there is a full backup sync that takes place between the primary UCM and the secondary UCM, that information will be showed right here. And it's going to show you whether it went successfully or it failed. So this way you would know what happened. Regarding HA failover log, this is where you find the information related to uh, the switchover. If something happens to the HA failover, this is where you can come back and look for that information. Since this is a new install, there is no information right there. The other option I want to talk about is under HA settings, which is this option right here, force switch. 
So once the high availability feature is configured successfully, you will have this option switch in blue. And this option is available only on the active UCM and it can be used to manually force switch over from active to standby. And this function can be used when trying to do a firmware upgrade or when the automatic switchover does not take place for unknown uh, reason. So for example, when you try to upgrade the UCM, the steps that you need to follow is you need to switch the active mode to the standby mode, then upgrade the primary UCM to the desired firmware. Once the upgrade is uh, complete, then you can go back to the standby, which will have this option of switch. Then you switch back to the primary, like you switch the active status to the primary UCM. Then you do the upgrade on the secondary uh, UCM. So this way, the configuration and the data will always be synced correctly. Another thing, in addition to HA log, there's also the option here under maintenance, system events, where you can uh, actually enable the HA failure warning. So you can set it to alert in case you want it to be uh, displayed under alert log, or you can also enable email notifications so you can receive an email uh, every time there is an HA failure warning. And the last thing I want to talk about is uh, GDMS. As you have noticed already, these two UCM devices are being managed through GDMS. So if I go back to my GDMS account, let me refresh this. Once the HA uh, configuration is complete, the status will also be displayed uh, on the GDMS account. So here the host means the primary and spare means the secondary. And another thing also um, that you can do for GDMS is when you have uh, users connected to the UCM through GDMS, especially uh, Grandstream Wave users, uh, one of the things that uh, you must configure on the GDMS is the custom domain name. So you have to change that one from the default one to the custom domain one. So to change the default domain name, so we're going to go to edit device. So this is the one that is currently used and assigned by GDMS. So you need to add a custom domain name. Uh, so this is where you enter your domain name and just make sure that the domain name is being resolved to this uh, domain name of the UCM. Then you add information related to the, the private secret key and the public secret key certificate. Then save and apply the changes. And when users try to register uh, to the UCM through GDMS, they need to use the domain name that you're going to be using as a custom domain name. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and close this one for now. Concerning the domain customization, you only apply it to the primary UCM, which is marked by host. Uh, so here I, I switched the name. Here actually it should be primary and the uh, second one should be secondary. So, so I just need to change the names by going to edit and set this one to primary and change this one back to secondary. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave us a comment below if you have any questions and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with all our videos. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.